Well, good day, guys. Uh, yeah, Salika's gone now. Kind of sucks, but uh, oh, what's this? Oh, oh, what's this? Mopac. What's that? Oh, what are these? Friggin' right. Pyrometer. Friggin' uh, boost gauge. Yeah, these are my gauges, my new ones. <laughs> Friggin'. If you guys don't know what that is, it's One Pug Life. Go find him on YouTube and subscribe. He's hilarious. Um, let's see that thing. A little knickknacks and whatnot. So. Yeah. I can finally uh, get rid of the old duct tape gauge and friggin' make it look proper. Yeah. So, I'm keeping that guy though. Because that's my friggin'. It keeps fogging up, but I think that's just because there's coolant in there. So, yeah. Then I gotta friggin' find a stereo for it, because the stock one, it's got that uh, error or whatever, and it's like, ah, I'm not gonna work for you. So I'm like, hey, you know what? Screw you. Okay, so, anyways, pyrometer and boost gauge. They're gonna be going up top there with those uh, gauge pods that I bought. So. Get the freaking hood open. Pyrometer, I'm thinking I'll tap it into the down pipe. I'm gonna freaking cut my head off with this hood. Oh look, you can tell. <laughs> okay, so my batteries just died, but I got some new ones. So yeah, anyways. Um, the pyrometer probe, there's three different ways to install it. Um, I hope it just didn't drop something. I don't think so. Okay, anyways, um, you could do the friggin' hose clamp. That's what that's called. The hose clamp method, which is what I'm gonna do because I'm replacing the exhaust anyways. And when I get around to putting it in the forerunner, what I wanna do is mount it coming off the manifold, probably on the bottom or something, right around there. But for now, I'm just gonna drill a hole in there and mount it with the, oh, apologize, just ran, rammed you guys into that. I'm gonna mount it with the hose clamp. Why, why do I forget what it's called? So the hose clamp method, you need this little friggin' dude. And first you put that guy on there and then you put this guy there and then you tighten it up onto the, the little friggin' probe thing in there. And then uh, you want it to be about, I think it was about halfway. Within about that much. If your pipe's that big, you want it to be within that much. So, that's what I'm gonna be aiming for. So, I'm gonna start drilling the hole now. I got friggin' uh, pilot hole driller maker thingy, and I got a bigger one that's the proper size, so start drilling. Also, because this thing is at an angle, what I did is I wrapped the hose clamp around there and I figured out where it laid flat best. I pulled it tight and everything, so right about there. Yeah. Friggin' drill a hole. Okay, so I got my hole drilled now. Uh, now I gotta depth test it. Find out how deep this friggin' hole is. Oh, huh. that's not bad. So it goes all the way up to that little nubbin, so I'm gonna want to put it about there so that it's about halfway. So right about there. And then uh, I'll run a thermocouple into the cab and set up the gauges. Yeah. They say to go within two inches of the turbo in either direction. Um, if you've got a turbo, if not, you can put it right on the manifold. What I'm gonna do is, uh, well I already told you guys this, mount it on the manifold on the bottom and Bob will be your uncle. Yeah. Okay, so I got this guy, uh, whoa, way out of focus is what I got it. Um, so I got that freaking thing torqued down. Now I gotta go inside and get that uh, ceramic washer. And that guy goes over here and that's to prevent uh, exhaust gases from leaking out and leaking out. 
<laughs> oh, I apologize. It's been a long week. I'm very tired. Like, fell asleep on the couch a couple days ago, right after work, and we had to get going. So it just it wasn't fun. Okay, so there's a ceramic washer. It's all blah blah blah, fragile. Don't friggin' kink it or nothing. And then it says something like, "Yeah, all you guys can read it." So, yeah. Anyways, this is that other method minus that bolt. This is the weld on friggin' flange or whatever. But uh, this guy, you drill a hole in your exhaust about the size of that inner friggin' thing there and then you pop this bung on and then you weld it. I'm not gonna do that. I'll probably end up doing that on the Forerunner, like when I get this motor in the Forerunner. And uh, yeah, so I need that friggin' washer and then I'll stove on there and then I'll stove her in and then I'll start running the wires. Yeah. And that's where I'm gonna be mounting them. There you go. <laughs> Friggin' reflection. It's starting to get windy again. Yeah. Oh look, you can tell. Okay, so I got that ceramic washer on. Now I'm just gonna freaking feed her in. And like I said before, Bob will be your uncle. Yeah. I guess it would help if I actually showed you guys what I was doing. Freak sakes. Okay, I'm just like, oh, I'll blow it off first. There. Probably got crap all over the ceramic washer. Freak sakes. Okay. Damn it, I did it again. Right, so now I'll torque that guy down. And then I'll start running wires. Okay, so I got the guy all friggin' tightened down. Not going nowhere. Double negative. Yeah. So now, I'm gonna friggin' uh, wire up this, this guy. So I'll show you guys how to do that. Okay, so we got our thermal couple here. And um, what they say in the instructions is, well, since it's offset, um, you're supposed to keep them offset, so I'll friggin' connect those two together and then I'll run this yellow one up and then back to that. And they also give you some really friggin' awesome heat shrink, so just leave that guy on there and Bob's your uncle. Okay, so you can see how I've connected it. That's uh, how they show it in the books. So I'll friggin' run a piece of heat shrink from this all the way up to there. So, friggin' about that long. Yeah. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm not cutting this. I'll just leave it and freaking sleeve the entire thing because you know what? There's no freaking other places you need to do anything fancy like that. So I'll just feed her on and you know, heat shrink her. There. So I got her freaking sleeved on. I'm just gonna run the rest of the freaking wire up to there and then I'll freaking come back and heat shrink her. Yeah. I've also got to install my boost gauge. So what I'm going to be doing is replacing this little freaking guy with uh, the other freaking guy and uh, yeah, they'll both frig off together. Yeah. Well, it's starting to get dark and my batteries are going to die. Frick! Okay, but anyways, I teed off here for the vacuum gauge, or the boost gauge, and I'm just going to run these two together like that and put them in one solid piece of loom up to there. I got them pulled up into the freaking cab and then I'm going to mount the gauges there. And if I can record anything else, I will try. If not, apologize. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Take care. Well, I got the gauges installed. Uh, it's a different day. Uh, it's the day after that I installed them or whatever. But uh, boost gauge works awesome. Just coming up to a corner, so I don't really want to friggin' use it because it's all friggin' not very nice out today. Yeah, but the pyrometer works good too. It's a little bit dim, I don't know why, but uh, I guess they'll read it. Uh, it's at 700 degrees right now, right off the turbo, so that's not horrible. Uh, before I couldn't even get above a thousand degrees so what I did is I turned the max fuel screw in about three quarters of a turn I turned down the idle so it was back to as close as 750 as I could get it and um, she chooches a lot more black now but I still haven't been able to get it over a thousand degrees so yeah 
once I do the governor mod, it'll be a little bit different because it starts to cut out fuel after about 2,500 RPM. So, yeah. Friggin' right. Those gauges look awesome. Yeah. Friggin' 23 pounds. <laughs> and I got up to about 800 there, I think. It's friggin' sweet. Mind you, I don't have 100% traction as the roads are garbage, but I'm coming up to my turn now, so I gotta go. Apologize. Just got a bit of a rattle at about a thousand RPMs. This is what I really like though. I'll shut her off for you. I like hearing the turbo. Freaking awesome. And the quiz. So yeah. So far, it's freaking awesome. I love this car. I love the motor. It's a great motor. But uh, she's got a bit of a tranny leak at the bottom, so got to top her up a little bit. Hopefully, uh, hopefully it's not right out, and hopefully that kind of high-pitched whining sound isn't coming from the transmission. But uh, yeah. Oh, uh, you can't even see. You can kind of see those two freaking white things there. I gotta run something over top of all those wires because it's pretty ugly. Uh, and I'll turn on some lights. Okay, so yeah, basically all I did was I turned in the max fuel screw right there. That's the one I had to break the collar off of. And then I wound down that guy right there. And turn that guy down so that the RPMs would go down a bit. But uh, yeah, so I ordered my injector pump rebuild uh, gasket kit thingy. Is that leaking now? Ah, uh, better not be leaking. It better just be snow. Looks like it's leaking out of that screw. Or something. I can't tell if it's diesel or not. There's not enough of it for me to get on my finger and smell it. Oh, it is. No, it's coming off of that, and that's not freaking diesel. Looks like it's dripping down or something. Eh, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, so I gotta friggin' fill her up. I think that's where you do it, that little plug right there. But there's, I can't, I cannot find any way to tell how much fluid is in it right now. But, uh, you can see down there, she's leaking a bit right out of that boot, so... Yeah, not very, uh, not very good. Also, one thing, I thought the gauge was broken, but, um, yeah, there you can see the wiring. I need to clean that up a bit, but, oh well. Um, when I shut the car off after driving around Calgary and stuff, um, the pyrometer was still reading, like, friggin' 200 degrees, but that's because it takes residual heat off of this. Like, the friggin' probe is still hot because well it's being in there so and that uh, all I did was I friggin used my laser thermometer friggin thing and it reads in Celsius so all I had to do was convert Celsius to Fahrenheit and I friggin figured out that yeah that's all it is is the probe still hot so yeah other than that she's still running great no more blowing out coolant and stuff Friggin' uh, oh, I just kind of half burped. But yeah, she's running pretty freaking awesome. I love it. Love it. Yeah. So anyways, um, yeah, I guess I'll make this video and upload it tonight. So see you guys in the next one. Take care.